Hi, medieval friends. Today we're gonna to make nettle soup. And since it's spring, we're gonna go out and forage for the ingredients ourselves like the Vikings would have done. Those who are familiar with stinging nettle, I understand your hesitation at this recipe. However, dead nettle is a plant that does not contain any spiky hairs that will cause a rash. While not a true nettle, it is still nutritious and edible and has similar characteristics. It has a square stem. You can see the edges. It has purple tops and little purple flowers that are very sweet. And it has oppositional leaves. Two on that side, two on that side, two on that side, two on that side. So we're going to harvest some dead nettle to use for our nettle soup. There is one lookalike for dead nettle called henbit, and that's actually a close relative to this particular plant. Both are edible. Henbit's a little stringier. The leaves aren't quite as bunchy. It still has a purple top, but it's not gonna hurt you. Some of my nettle grows next to the wild strawberries. You can still see how it's got the oppositional leaves while the strawberry just has three and they're spiky around the edges. Since our basket is full, we're gonna move on to our next ingredient chives or wild onion. Wild onion very much resembles regular green onions or chives. They smell like onion, they taste like onion, they're a pretty fantastic substitute growing right outside. It does have a look-alike, but the leaves are a lot, they're different, they're u-shaped. They're not fully round, don't eat that one. Eat that one. If you're not sure about native plants in your area, please do not go start picking random weeds. Now that we're back inside and all washed up from playing in the dirt, I wanted you to see just how similar these wild onions are to your typical green onion or chive. The root ball should look pretty much like a tiny onion. The end of the stem is circular, just like you would get with chives. Always make sure you know what you're picking before you eat. If you don't know, just go to the store and get the real thing, please. And now that I'm done lecturing you about strange leafy plants you find in your yard, let's get to cooking our soup. The first thing we're going to do is use our fancy modern technology and wash all of the things we just picked from outside. Now that our nettles are washed and we've removed any icky roots or dead leaves from our four cups, we are going to add, I'm going to add water. You can add some kind of broth or bouillon or whatever you want to add. I'm going to use water and you're just going to fill it up until it covers the nettles. Now we're going to turn our burner on high and we want to boil it for about five minutes. While waiting on the nettle to boil, I'm going to chop up the onion until it's a rounded eighth cup. I'm only doing half the recipe, so I need half of a third of a cup. Now that we've started to boil, I'm setting a timer for five minutes. Thank you. 
So now we're going to turn off our burner and we are going to drain our pot but keep the water or bouillon or whatever you're using. You don't get rid of it. So I have a bowl under my strainer to catch all the liquid. My nettles now smell like boiled spinach. If you noticed or were concerned by the water coming out of them, please remember that these are purple nettle with flowers on them. So it's a little discolored, but it's not dirt. We are not going to use dirt water, ew. So we're gonna take the nettles out of our pan and we are going to chop them nice and thin. Now that our nettle really resembles boiled spinach, and I've taken out a couple of the little stem pieces that just didn't want to play nice, we're going to go back over here to our burner and turn it on medium and add in one tablespoon of butter. And as that melts and gets a nice coating on the pan, we're going to add in our flour. I'm using rice flour. Um, wheat flour could have been used, but was not very likely. Um, oat flour and barley were much more common in the area. But rice flour was used. We're just going to melt that and make a nice roux. And once it starts to brown a little bit, that's when we're going to add our bouillon back in. Or water or chicken broth or whatever you're using that you've got on hand. Once you get your liquid back in, you'll want to add your nettles and your onion and any other spices or seasonings that you want to use, salt, pepper, marjoram, thyme, whatever you enjoy. And you want to get everything back up to an even temperature and get it nice and warm. Give it a good three to four minutes. Garnish it with egg yolk and enjoy your soup. The Vikings made nettle soup because it's one of the first plants that emerges after a long winter. Just like the Vikings would have used the stinging nettles, I've used the purple dead nettle because it's the one of the first plants that emerges outside my front door after a long hard winter and it's highly nutritious. For those of you curious about the noises in the background, let me just point out my kitchen wolves. This is Boy, this is Molly, and this is Roxy. And they do not know how to be quiet until I have treats. <laughs>